Hey, this is David Wells. I wanted to share a performance thing that I made that is super cool. It was an idea. It all started from an, a tweet from Bjorn. Bjorn asked me, hey, have you heard about this new thing called Perfume.js? It might be cool to have an analytics plugin for that. Uh, so I went to the Perfume docs and indeed it was very cool. So Perfume.js, for, for those of you not aware, this is a library that will do performance testing uh, on your pages. So it will send uh, navigation timing, a bunch of resource timings, time to first byte, first input delay, all these amazing stats um, directly from your app or site. Um, and then it will actually allow you to send that to a particular, you know, whatever analytics provider you might be using. Um, and they have a nice little method here, uh, analytics tracker, and then you just plug in your analytics tool. So this got uh, me thinking, um, they have an example of how to do this with Google Analytics in their docs, which is awesome. Uh, but what if we could combine this with the uh, analytics uh, package that I wrote? that lets you plug in really any third-party analytics tool. Um, there's a bunch of plugins already made or you can write your own. Uh, but how about we make a Perfume.js plugin for uh, Perfume? So uh, whatever analytics provider you want to send that telemetry data to, uh, you can uh, without having to like manually write this for each individual provider, etc. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is, is creating a quick React app, uh, adding the uh, Perfume.js plugin and we're gonna see that uh, information flowing into, we'll look at Google Analytics and I'll show how to connect this to your own custom backend. If you really don't wanna send any data to Google Analytics, you can send stuff wherever you want. So let's dive into it. Okay, so here we have a, wow, just a fancy React app. Uh, this thing's ready to IPO. Uh, VCs send me a note uh, on Twitter if you're looking to invest. Here's the code. So simple, single component React app, nothing fancy here. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna actually install um, analytics, install the plugin, and, and install Perfume.js. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna jump over to the terminal and go ahead and install the dependencies we need. So we need analytics, uh, we need Perfume.js, that's the library doing this awesome perf metric stuff for us. And then the analytics, add analytics Perfume.js plugin. This is just a thin wrapper that I'm gonna walk through a little bit later in this video. So let's go ahead and install those. Go ahead and use Yarn if that's your favorite. Whatever floats your boat. And once that's done, we're gonna start back up the application. So if we go into our code, what are we gonna do here? We are going to add in um, analytics. So we're gonna import analytics from the analytics package. And we're gonna import perfume from the perfume.js library. And finally, we're gonna import the perfume plugin. Oops, perfume plugin from Analytics Perfume JS. Perfume JS. Fantastic. All right, so now we have everything uh, imported. Um, let's go ahead and jump over to the usage docs and walk through this. So, uh, when you use analytics, uh, you need to initialize analytics for your project. So, analytics lets you do like custom event tracking, page view track, etc. Um, and that you can send that data anywhere. Uh, and, and then that's a, it's a pluggable system and that's what we're actually doing here today. We're plugging in um, Perfume.js so we can also track those metrics. Um, but what we need to do is actually, so we initialize analytics with our uh, app name. So if I come in here, we're gonna go ahead and initialize this with our um, app name. And then there is uh, the plugin. So uh, there's types as well with this package. So um, it'll auto complete stuff for you. So in the plugins array, this is where we attach any um, analytics provider that we want, um, including this just perfume plugin. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that uh, and pass it its options. So uh, 
you need to pass perfume uh, its instance, so it calls itself, um, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, and then there are some additional options. We won't go into those just yet. Uh, great. So that's uh, attached. Um, if we go look at our app, uh, it's not going to show us anything because we don't have any other plugins attached to analytics. So let's go ahead and we'll add a custom one right now. So we'll call this test plugin. We're going to add a tracking method. And we're just going to console.log out uh, the actual payload of, of uh, any tracking call that happens uh, in our application. And, and that's what the Perfume.js plugin is actually doing. It's, it's firing those tracking calls automatically on the, the performance events. So I'm going to go ahead and console.log out the uh, payload of those events and we can take a look. All right, so let's go take a look at our application. So here is our React app. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. So what we can see here is uh, the first paint um, event is firing and then uh, some first interaction stuff. If we look at the actual perfume docs, you can see what all these um, uh, acronyms mean. Uh, it's also in the uh, readme of the main perfume JS. But uh, so what we can see there is, hey, our analytic events are firing. Um, they're not sending anywhere though. They're actually just sending to this console.log. And that's really uh, what we wanna do now is, is install something like Google Analytics and attach the Google Analytics plugin here in the plugins array. And those perfume events would actually just automatically send into our Google Analytics account or HubSpot or Customer.io or, or whatever analytics tool you're using, including your own backend. Before we take a look at uh, those plugins, let's actually dive into what the what the Perfume JS plugin is doing. So it is uh, just using the the normal uh, plugin system from the analytics package. Uh, if you're curious about writing your own plugin, uh, I recommend checking out the docs. But basically, yeah, we're returning a name, and then we're just using the initialize lifecycle method of plugins. Um, and there's a bunch of different lifecycle events that you can hook into, but uh, we're just gonna be using the initialize one for this particular plugin. And really what it, all it's doing is saying like, all right, hey, initialize um, Perfume.js when analytics uh, bootstraps, and we're actually just gonna go ahead and call the Perfume API to set up that analytics tracker. And then under the hood, uh, every time one of the uh, events fires from Perfume, it is calling analytics.track and sending those events through. So this is using the same API as it, you would be if you were just using uh, normal Perfume.js. But notice that this is actually what we're doing here. We're just initializing a new Perfume.js. And in our analytics tracker, instead of uh, you know instrumenting every single analytics tool uh, individually here, we're using the analytics abstraction to just say analytics, which instance is, is the analytics instance, dot track. And what that'll call is the uh, analytics dot track method, which basically will call track on any plugin that you have attached. Um, and that's what we're seeing in our um, application here. So we just have that test plugin right now. So when um, th this plugin fires those tracking events from Perfume.js, we're just console.logging them out right now. Let's go ahead and add Google Analytics into this um, project and we'll go ahead and send those events through. So I'm gonna stop my uh, package here. I'm gonna uh, npm install at analytics slash google dash analytics. And inside of my app code, I'm gonna install, import this, import Google Analytics from my plugin and then right underneath here I'm going to attach that and that has an option of uh, what the tracking ID is so tracking ID this is your Google Analytics tracking ID I have one here I'm going to just copy this because we already have a live instance here so what we're going to see now is when I save this, let's make sure that NPM is finished and let's go ahead and start our app. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So what we're doing here is saying like, hey, all right, we have this custom plugin. I could remove this right now. We'll keep it there just so we can see the console.logs. Uh, but I'm attaching Google Analytics as well. So now um, if I go to my app and refresh, so we can still see our console.logs from our custom plugin, but we're, what we're also going to see is those tracking events firing to Google Analytics. So again, I'll clear this console. We'll fire this up again. So there, there are our tracking events. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and log into Google Analytics and we can see these coming through live. Okay, so inside of my Google Analytics account, uh, what we can do is let's just go into real time. We can look at events and we can look at, uh, we'll look at the last 30 minutes. What we can see is all of the events that have just piped through. Uh, I'll go ahead and refresh this, send some events back through. You can see our network request happening. And uh, yeah, there's some new live events coming back through. So by default, the event category name is Perfume.js. If you do want to customize that, you can uh, add a category here category and you could say just like perf or something like that then uh, if we save this and go ahead and uh, hit these again we're gonna see um, that new perf category flowing in here so it really just depends on on how your analytics is set up and how you want to do that and what you want to name it um, but yeah and once the data actually flows into the behavior and events uh, section of Google Analytics you can drill in and then you can see you know, how many events you've collected and you know, start looking at the event values. This is really where you're gonna glean uh, some of those insights. So like our metrics going up, our metrics going down, et cetera. This is, this is really where the uh, perf measurement stuff comes into play. And that's really the beauty of, of Perfume.js. It does a great job sending just a ton, a ton of metrics through uh, to where again wherever you want the reason that the library is actually decoupled from perfume so the reason why you install perfume separately is because I'm sure perfume JS is going to have all kinds of awesome uh, updates and that's not coupled to the actual uh, abstraction here uh, so if there are any updates you can just update perfume independently um, and uh, under the hood uh, analytics will just call that tracking for you but yeah, so that, that's, that's kind of looking at the um, Google Analytics side of it. Uh, again, if, if I wanted to, uh, I could you know, send the, these um, metrics to my custom backend uh, in, a, in a custom plugin. If I just wanted to fetch with that data, post it somewhere, uh, I could do that. Uh, if you do not want to use Google Analytics or any other um, third-party uh, analytics provider and you want to send it to your own server, um, that's totally possible with this as well. Um, but yeah, basically what this will allow you to do is send your, your the perf, uh, Perfume.js metrics to whatever tool you want. By default, it sends it to all plugins um, uh, provided here. So let's say that this was like the HubSpot plugin. Um, that perf data would send to Google Analytics and into HubSpot. If you just want it to send into a specific provider or if you want to exclude a specific provider, uh, you can do that with the options as well. And that's in the docs here where basically you set destinations where you can basically toggle on like, hey, I do want to send this to Google Anal Analytics, but not into HubSpot, uh, for example. And those names are the uh, keys of the plugin. So if you actually console.log out like the object that's returned here, you'll see what the key is. Uh, additionally, if you just look at uh, any of the plugins, uh, the the actual name of the plugin is uh, in the code. So for example, the namespace here is, is HubSpot. So that, that's the corresponding keys. There's uh, some uh, additional docs on, on how to actually exclude provider specific events uh, in the docs as well. Um, and it's using that exact same format. So you can disable all of them and only enable one of them or um, just enable or disable a single one of them, etc. So it's really up to you how you want to do it. But that is using uh, Perf JS, uh, uh, Perfume JS in a nutshell. Uh, please feel free to tweet at me um, if you have any questions. I'm uh, at David Wells on Twitter. Happy to answer any questions that people have. 
Um, and yeah, hope you, you, you can use this to uh, speed up your uh, applications. Before we wrap up, I'm gonna uh, just kind of finish out the app here and we're gonna add uh, just three more events to our actual application. So now that we have Google Analytics and our test um, set up, let's just add um, uh, on-click handlers to these buttons. So I'm gonna do uh, inline function here. And when I click this, I'm gonna call analytics.track and we'll just say this is button clicked, for example. So this is if you're doing, this is for your actual business logic um, events that you might wanna track. I just wanna show how that works. So I'm gonna copy and paste this so I don't have to write on click handlers for everything. This is for page view tracking. Uh, obviously you wouldn't do this from a button. You would do this in the route handler um, or when the page actually loads if you're just using this in static HTML. So that is the page call. And then um, this is the identify call. So let's change this to identify. And we'll just call this user XYZ. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Uh, with tracking calls, the second the second uh, argument is the actual uh, additional metadata to, to go along with that. So let's say color blue, color blue. Cool. All right. So if I go back into my application now, we can see, still see like all of those performance events are sending from uh, Perfume Jess. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear this. Let's click uh, track. So we can see an, an event just fired through to Google Analytics from that button click, um, as well as our console.log. There's our button click. And in the payload, we can see those additional properties, so color blue. So that's how you can use um, analytics uh, inside of your application, um, just the normal API. Those normal API docs are uh, just in the API reference here uh, of all the different things that you can do with it. Uh, if you are using analytics with React, you might want to check out the React hooks for them where you can um, use analytics, set up a provider at the top level of your app, and then just use that hook wherever you want to use the actual like analytics um, API so you don't have to um, import the analytics instance around. Um, and by analytics instance, I mean this. Uh, so typically in apps that I build, I will create an analytics.js file and then um, export uh, export the default, the analytics instance. And then I will uh, import that and, and use that to do analytics.track, etc. Unless I'm using the uh, hooks library, in which case you don't need to do that. You just need to uh, import use analytics wherever uh, it is down in that React tree. So cool, that was a lot. Thanks for staying with me. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions and I hope you enjoy. This package is installable at, uh, at analytics slash perfume.js. And I'm out.